in coping up with the course load and all. I mean, is there an issue uh, with this course or the practicals? So there is no difficulty in the case of biology. Okay. Okay. Even the practicals, right? The theory or the uh, or the or the lab courses is okay with you. Guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Biology is great. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I will start the class with the lipids and uh, the standard protocol. If you have a question, just ask me a question. And uh, you know anything related to the last class, you can just just hold on. Once we go forward a little bit, then uh, you could uh, ask your questions. All right. Yeah. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> uh, so I have something to say. Yeah. So uh, can we get a, a general structure of which in which direction we are going with the biology course? Uh, I did not follow your question. So like uh, what uh, what we are going to do after this, like we are doing lipids right now and after yes. this, what we are going to do and after that. I see. So yeah, so essentially, you know, I'll be talking about all the biomolecules. All right. So first thing, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. No. Yeah, great. So uh, so now we are doing lipids and I, I after this, uh, we will start with the um, carbohydrates. All right, and hmm. uh, uh, once we know a little bit about the carbohydrates, because you know lipids uh, are relatively easy molecules to understand, and they have not been very well studied. But you know there are certain interesting information. Uh, so you know, so 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 we will go from the easier things to relatively more complex uh, uh, complex biomolecules. All right. So uh, lipids. After I finish the lipids, we'll go to the uh, carbohydrates. And once we finish the carbohydrates, we will spend some time with proteins. That is probably going to the most comprehensive because, uh, I mean, comprehensive meaning that more comprehensive than the other three biomolecules which we will study. Uh, because there are many things that we uh, that people have understood about proteins since uh, you know probably early 1900s, right? And then uh, we will uh, dwell a little bit with, uh, not little bit, you know, reasonable, reasonable, not too much detail, but reasonable detail with the nucleic acids. All right. And if time permits, because uh, I have to finish it within December, seems like. Right. So if time permits, we will uh, see a little bit about metabolism and uh, cellular organelles. But if time doesn't permit, we will just uh, leave it up to biomolecules. I mean, I mean, and finish it at biomolecules. And uh, I'm sure that you know you will study about metabolism in detail and uh, about the cellular organelles in the next semester. Is that is that clear? Okay, so thank you very much. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right. So in the last class, sir, we I had one. Yeah. Yes, I had one question to ask. Uh, is that you have to speak a little louder? Uh, please come close to the microphone. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, so my question is that uh, when we learn about these biomolecules, uh, uh, how important is learning uh, the uh, the precise structures of uh, each of these? named molecules uh, 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 as opposed to like the general properties of the class of biomolecules? Well, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I mean, not sometimes, all of the times, uh, the, the properties are fundamentally dictated by the structures, okay? I mean, precise structures, meaning that I don't expect you to know that palmitic acid has probably 15 uh, carbon chain uh, and uh, stearic acid as well, whatever 17, 18 with some unsaturated. I mean, as long and, and where precisely is this unsaturation? As long as you have an idea about what stearic acids are, palmitic acids are, right? Or for example, if I talk about acetic acid, right? You know, you should be able to distinguish that, you know, what is the difference between a palmitic acid and an acetic acid, okay, or butyric okay. acid. Yep. Because yes, if you do yes, not yes. know, if you do not know, then we run into trouble, right? In later later courses or even in biology. So, for example, you know, I mean, 
I, I don't know. Many of you probably were interested in studying medicine. I, I have no idea. At least I was. But in medicine, before you know about the medicines and the surgery, you have to precisely know about the anatomy of a human body. Until unless you know the anatomy of human body, it's very difficult to understand the physiology. Right. So what we are dealing now is the anatomy. The structures can be uh, it's it's analogous to the anatomy of a human body. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Thank oh. you. Sir. Yeah. So uh, we will continue with the uh, with where we left. Yeah. So I was talking about the lipids, you know, so we had a little bit of discussion about the uh, lipids, uh, single tail lipid forming uh, my cells like this kind of structures and the double tail lipids uh, forming uh, lipid bilayers. You know, uh, it also depends upon the way uh, it, it many times depends upon, you know, for example, if you have just a pure lipids, right, whatever lipid it is, double tail lipid, along with that, if you add some other heterogeneous lipids, the structure can be quite different. And also um, the way you form the lipids, you know, whether you just, uh, you know, add lipids till the critical micellar concentration is obtained or or you sonicate the lipids. Uh, different kinds of structures are formed. For example, many times it is seen that double tail lipids, you know, depending upon, I'm not sure, probably sonication or something, uh, they can form concentric layers. For example, you know, you know, like onion, right? When you peel off an onion, you have several concentric layers, right? So, uh, uh, so you not only form these lipid vesicles, you can actually form concentric layers. So, yeah, so there are many funny things about lipids, you know, and, and these physical properties, as you can imagine, that they are fundamentally driven by the chemical composition of, of these uh, lipids. Uh, so, but anyway, we won't deal with those, but I just thought you know, I'll mention you because they're very heterogeneous. They can actually form quite heterogeneous structures. And, uh, uh, and uh, okay, so we'll come to that later. Yeah. So, so what, uh, yeah. What is sonication of lipids? Oh, sonication. Oh, uh, sonication is basically, uh, so you have a water, uh, mm, do you know what is a sonicator? Mm, I guess no. Okay. So to well, dissolve uh, the things in water. Like, uh, yeah, it can, yeah, sonicator is just, uh, it, I mean, let's say, it's a, it's a, it, let's say that, you know, you vibrate something, with certain a certain frequency, okay. I do not know what is the precise frequency of the vibration. It's it's essentially you know when you when you uh, when you try to you know when you go to practical courses, you know you would try to dissolve salt by stirring it, right? So uh, by stirring, what you are doing is uh, you are agitating, you are you are you are you are you are forcing the collision between the molecules and the water molecules so that you know the the molecules get extremely well solvated and dissolve, right? Sonicator, sonicator does the same thing, but it's it's more um, mechanical, meaning that uh, you know you can automate it. You know there are uh, there are very small uh, equipments or instruments. You know you can set the timer, and and these guys with a precise frequency will keep on doing the same thing. Uh, once you're once you're in laboratory, I'm sure that you know your lab has a sonicator, so it's it's essentially to dissolve things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, um, yeah. So uh, we were talking about yes, yes. So, so in general, I told you about the uh, phospholipids that are present on the uh, in the in the in the membrane that we find today. All right. So we have the glycerol uh, backbone. I mean, uh, so glycerol is the main 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 constituent of this uh, glycerol phospholipids. Along with that, one of the primary alcohol is attached to a phosphate group and two of them are connected to the fatty acids. Now, you know, so um, we saw that, you know, this R group, this pendant R group can vary. This is here. And depending upon the charge that is present on this R group, the entire lipid molecule can be negatively charged or neutral. Okay. Because, you know, if you just, uh, if you don't have an R group, the entire lipid molecule is negatively charged, a single single negative charge because of the phosphate present here. But if you have a positive charge, the neutral uh, the, the lipid will be neutral. Uh, and now, if you have membranes which are composed of such kind of lipids, where uh, so for example, you can have lipids which are primarily composed of phosphatidylcholine, meaning that uh, this R is a choline group, then the lipid is neutral. 
and if you have or if you have you know uh, lipids which are composed of phosphoryl ethanolamine right the lipid bilayer will be sort of neutral now if a lipid molecule is neutral you can imagine that uh, the molecules that essentially get attracted onto the surface of lipids purely by charged interactions that will completely differ if you have lipid membranes that are composed of uh, uh, let's say uh, and you know negatively charged lipids right so for example yeah so uh, if we if you are to look at uh, today's eukaryotic and prokaryotic membranes for example in bacteria right let's say, let's talk about e coli so it turns out that e coli e coli is a, is a bacteria is cherichia coli you know so uh, i i mean is is the is the first slide that i showed you probably in this class you know there was a very nice hand drawn figure of e coli so that's the, that's the organism i'm talking about now escherichia coli turns out that you know they are primarily composed of lipids which are rich in phosphatidyl glycerol right meaning you know this r group is another glycerol all right so if you have another glycerol here so you can imagine this entire molecule is negatively charged right and uh, phosphatidyl glycerol and, uh, uh, and and sometimes it also has i think uh, phosphatidyl um, uh, ethanolamine this this guy right so essentially you know it's a combination of uh, there were there are definitely many many other lipids but mainly you know it's uh, uh, ethanolamine and phosphatidyl glycerol so you can imagine that so that means that the net charge of the membrane of the of the bacteria is actually negative on the contrary if you are to consider the membranes that are that are i mean the membrane of eukaryotic cells i mean like our cells you know if you take you know one of our i don't know some some kidney cells or you know muscle cell or whatever the membrane will be primarily composed of uh, phosphatidyl uh, i think choline uh, yeah this guy yeah so so this is a positively charged molecule so that that gives the entire lipid a neutral sort of character it doesn't mean that you know there are no negatively charged lipids there are probably there can be phosphatidyl serine also okay this guy so that will give a negative but predominantly it's neutral lipids and the other thing that you have in eukaryotic membrane which is typically absent in prokaryotic membranes is the presence of cholesterol okay now uh, what cholesterol does that we will see in few minutes but no so now you know let's say that you have a eukaryotic cell which is primarily uh, the membrane is sort of neutral in charge and you have a prokaryotic membrane you know which is a bacterial membrane which is negatively charged so this is something that nature has exploited to uh, you know to to prepare molecules that can uh, you know you know that can kill kill pathogens right so uh, you know there are a class of molecules which are uh, called as um, uh, antimicrobial peptides right you know these antimicrobial peptides you know so i mean all of us secrete those you know so for example you, you i mean uh, i mean so i mean um, when a, when a mother is breastfeeding in the milk you know you have uh, such such peptides right so for example i think lactoferrin is one such molecule that is present in the milk and uh, there are many many uh, such antimicrobial peptides that are present in uh, fungi uh, even bacteria also produce some antimicrobial peptides you know it's it's present in the entire uh, plant and animal kingdom so what many of these guys do they it turns out that you know if you study the structure of these antimicrobial peptides you know they are of different shapes and structures right sequence lengths they are essentially polypeptides okay so you know if you are wondering what are peptides you know in, in, in couple of classes we will see what those peptides are if you still have con confusion you can ask me you know you can remind me about those antimicrobial peptides i'll show you some of those now uh, these antimicrobial yes yes sir the lipid and the polypeptides are like kind of same or that we were in lipid now we move to polypeptide part so they both are same thing no right? no, or, no 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 i am no no i am i am i'm trying to give you an example a real life example how the charge of the lipid uh, affects the membrane and that is used by nature 
to uh, selectively kill pathogens. Okay. So, Polypeptides are very different things. Polypeptides are not lipids. You can imagine peptides and poly is it's a polymer of peptides. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so, so Jan, what I could do is, you know, I hold on. I think, you know, there are something called as whiteboards. Uh, how do I escape? Huh, here. Uh, maybe I can. That's why I really <laughs> dislike our online classes. Uh, whiteboard. Yeah, it's coming. Hold on. I will sort of draw and demonstrate to you. Do you see something? Uh, some a white screen has come up. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah. So uh, what uh, you can see my screen, right? So it's black. Yes, sir. Huh. Sir, I can't see the screen. You can't see the screen. So I can see. Maybe it will come. It it will all depend upon probably how fast your bandwidth is. Can you see the screen now? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'm trying to draw draw some things. Sir, it's blank. It's black in color or can't see it, sir. It's coming up. Can others? See the uh, screen. All I can uh, see no, is sir. something went wrong. I can see an error. Yes, sir. There's just an error message. There is an error. Yes, there just is something not, wrong. Sir, it's visible the people who are not able to see. I can it. It is visible to some of them. It's visible to some of them. Sure. Should yeah, we leave yeah. and return? So should uh, I leave I, him? No, don't don't leave and all because uh, it seems like you know what someone else can also. Has someone else taken control of my screen? Because uh, I see some things and you know, people are doing stuff on my screen, which. Uh, Sir, I think everyone has access because. Oh, is it everyone has access to that? Yes, sir. I oh, think it's a Teams feature or something. You might have to disable that. Uh, yes, sir. Everyone has access. Everyone has access. OK, fine. You know, don't fiddle with this because, you know, then we will not get across the idea that I'm trying to get across to you. Can anyone see the, Can everyone see the screen now? Yes, sir. OK, no, sir. Uh, no, sir. OK, don't bother. We just leave it. Uh, uh, we will, uh, you know, it's it's extremely difficult. Uh, this is disgusting. Don't bother. Uh, we'll we'll straight away go to the slides. Don't bother. Yeah, I, I, at least now you can see the screen, right? Slides, can you see my slides? Yes. 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 So what I was trying to explain that, uh, see, uh, so so what nature does is nature understands, you know, because, you know, because of evolution, people, I mean, nature has realized that, you know, some membranes are this, some membranes are that. So um, uh, it's, it's a very interesting feedback. We won't, we don't want to go to evolution, but rather focus on our topic that, you know, so what nature does, you know, so for example, let's say uh, a specific yeast is getting, uh, you know, so it's it's is endangered by a by a specific bacteria. I don't know. I mean, or or some virus. I don't know something. Okay. Let's say organism A is in threat from an organism B, and that organism B turns out to be a bacteria, and the organism A membrane is uh, neutral in charge, and the organism B membrane is positive in charge, uh, negative in charge. Okay, and it's purely because of the charge of the charge of the lipids. So what organism may realize is that, oh, now if I can actually make molecules that can essentially go and target the negatively charged membrane, then I probably design something which can essentially go and bind to the membrane and 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 poke holes into the membrane and kill it. OK, this is this is the this is a strategy that that nature uses. And uh, the way it does, it actually makes molecules, OK, uh, which and, and those molecules are, let's say, you know, th those molecules are not lipid molecules. 
those molecules are called as antimicrobial peptides and those molecules go bind to the membrane of the organism b which is which has a membrane which is primarily composed of negatively charged and the way it does it pokes hole into the membrane now the question is how does these organism uh, how to, how do these molecules poke holes into the membranes you know it's it's very interesting what they do is now you know organism a is producing lots and lots of these these molecules right and when when the molecules are secreted and it goes and binds to the membrane of the organism b b having the negatively charged membrane they first attract get attracted by the electrostatic charges and if you when you have sufficient concentration of these uh, you know positively charged molecules that are secreted by the organism a they sort of get embedded into the membrane and form very large macromolecular assemblies you know so it's like uh, so imagine it's like you know it's like taking a barrel okay and if you have a balloon all right and uh, and and you take a barrel uh, you know i don't know it's a very small or you know it, it just a, just a, just a, a you know straw made up of uh, straw meaning you know the, you know or, or pipe you know it's a, it's a, it's a rod which is uh, cylindrical and you make that pipe and uh, you know puncture that uh, puncture that balloon so this is exactly what these molecules do so now of course you know the molecules are not produced in the shape of a rod but you know what they do is so the molecules are produced as a single you know whatever polypeptide chain a very thin thin molecules you know let's say the very thin sticks but these thin sticks first you know get attracted onto the surface of the negatively charged right and once they come in proximity on to the surface of the membrane they start to self assemble on the surface of the bacteria right and the self assemble leads to very large structures and these structures disrupt the membrane right and the reason why they disrupt the membrane is because of the dynamics that is present in the membrane right that we will see again in in few slides because it turns out that the membranes are not very rigid structures they are very dynamic structures okay yeah so this is about the charge now you you, you can probably yes, sir. yes sir a was in threat with b Means yes sir. that b wanted to kill a so but yeah. it turns out that b was killed by a yeah so is it is the b isn't b is in threat with a like the other way around no so see essentially what happens is you know i am talking about time zero okay but it doesn't happen in time zero right so it takes years of understanding for example let's talk about the coronavirus pandemic right now uh, we are being uh, we are being threatened by the virus seriously right you know because you know how many people have died in the entire world now what we are trying to do is you know we did not uh, we did not immediately devise uh, ways to tackle the virus what you probably would have seen news from moderna pfizer and even astrazeneca where they have developed you know mrna based or protein based molecules that can create antibodies and which can effectively kill the virus right so this is exactly what happens even in nature right from you know you know we here talking about you know very small <laughs> A near inanimate organism which is a virus as opposed to a multi multi cellular organism which is which is human being but this is the same thing that happens in even in single cellular organisms so you know so what happens is initially a doesn't realize that you know b is trying to kill us but you know once it realizes that takes a lot of time because you know it's also possible that the that the molecules which we are talking about these antimicrobial peptides you know it takes years of understanding you know because the a molecule a a organism doesn't have that 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 specific molecule in their repertoire right and not only you know so so because you know it's a very complex phenomenon so not only you have to produce that a molecule you also have to secrete it outside so that it goes and binds to that organism b and kills that organism right so it takes years of evolution because and and the other thing is that you know so th those organisms do not have the fancy tools like we have crystallography and all kinds of crazy tools biophysical tools to understand you know what is the chemical structure and all the way they do it is by randomization right which is which is in a way we call it as evolution right so they probably produce a molecule in amp which doesn't do anything but then it senses that oh my population is getting killed and of course you know 
you know there are thousands of we are not talking about thousands we are talking about billions of a which are on th which are which are threatened by the billions of b right but yes you are right it also yeah the b guys is also also a threat against the a now you know what it does it eventually you know if you read a little bit of literature i mean uh, you would probably appreciate that this pandemic is not first time it's not you know it's not spanish flu in 1918 1920s you know it happened earlier also even in you know several hundreds bc it has been there all the time right even in medieval periods but what happens is you know so um, these b guys these b guys which are essentially being getting killed by the a guys by those specific molecules the b guys also realize so what they do is they alter the composition of the lipids that is present on the membrane by certain mutations so that you know they are not a threat against the organism a so it's it's extremely dynamic it's extremely dynamic biology is extremely dynamic you know some things which i am telling you today uh, may not be true uh, after 10 years it you know i mean as as uh, as we have fancier and better tools to understand life and better and better information available we understand for example everyone thought that sars cov you know that 2003 outbreak is very similar to the sars cov2 but it turns out not you know the antibodies that are effective against sars cov it's very different than uh, the sars cov2 because, because but, but if you look at the geno genome sequence they are you know they are almost 90% identical there are certain changes in the spike protein that that leads to the binding and it turns out there are very few amino acids that is present on the receptor binding domain right uh, uh, which which leads to a very tight binding of this guy with our with our receptors so yeah i mean uh, uh, well, does it answer your question? I, I said many things, but uh, you probably have to. That it's like A was in threat with B. Yeah. So, but B was also in threat in A. So A also alters itself to kill B, and B yeah. also alters itself. Yes. And the yes. process goes on and on and on and, and on. The process goes on. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. sir. I had one question over here. Uh, yes. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. 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 Sure. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, my question is that, sir, if this, uh, uh, if these like proteins have to uh, enter the membranes and assemble in assemble themselves into a structure across the membranes, then there has to be a significant portion of them which is hydrophobic to uh, so as to not destabilize the membrane. So uh, how does that? Uh, how does such a thing with a highly hydrophobic portion travel through the aqueous medium at all? Ah, uh, no, no. See. Uh, there is a so these molecules that uh, uh, first of all uh, we are not talking about these proteins because it's very difficult to secrete proteins in the environment and uh, and the proteins stay stable. These are polypeptides and in most cases it turns out that you know either they are unstructured or some of them are structured and uh, they are stabilized by the formation of disulfide bonds. I mean I see I don't want to go into details because many people may not follow. Okay. But what happens? The answer to a question is uh, there is a there is a, so these peptides are amphipathic, like like the lipid molecules. They are also amphiphilic, meaning that you have a hydrophobic. Uh, oh, where is my laser pointer? Yeah. So meaning that the lipid molecules, the way the lipid molecules are amphipathic, you have a hydrophobic part, you have a hydrophilic part, like that. Those those polypeptides that we are talking about, which are weapons to kill the pathogens. They are also amphipathic. They have a component which are positively charged. Those are, uh, well, not this, but they have a component which are positively charged that get attracted towards the membrane. They also have some components which are uh, hydrophobic. And uh, if you're specifically talking about hydrophobic, it turns out that you know there are uh, these uh, polypeptides are rich in a, an, a, a, an amino acid, which is called as a tryptophan, okay? When we look look into the proteins, then you can uh, bring this question up. Then I can show you a couple of examples of these polypeptides and explain you that. And there are multiple mechanisms the way they uh, kill the bacteria. The most of them are actually membranolytic, meaning that they damage the membrane. They don't have to traverse inside the cell. They just create, uh, distort the membrane. And it turns out that a little distortion of the membrane is good enough for uh, for the bacteria to essentially die 
because it will if you if distort there are distortions in the membrane you know there might be ionic ionic imbalance and there might be some some crazy ions going from outside in inside out and uh, the integrity is lost and once the integrity is lost eventually there are a series of things that happen and the bacteria essentially dies sir okay i talking about antibodies no no we will not talk about antibodies now i have to finish the lipids no, no, no. Uh, these polypeptides are they the same as antibodies or something yeah, yes yes polypeptides very large polypeptides are called as antibodies no no the, no no the polypeptides which you were referring to uh, are those polypeptides same as antibodies just that no, you are not using the no, term or different no 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 they are different no they are different okay. okay so what is the name of the structures they form on the membrane what is the name of the structures that form on the membrane uh, uh these polypeptides form on the membrane oh they they form different kinds of shapes you know so uh, i don't know the shape but typically what they form is uh, well there are specific mechanisms they they essentially form uh, uh, aggregates that's what i can tell you okay people have not till today people have not seen because these are very small aggregates people have not been able to see those but uh, they have uh, they have been able to understand the phenomenon behind it they they know the mechanism behind it but uh, for example there are toxins uh, i don't I, i'm not going to deal with toxins but you will see that there are certain toxins which form very large pores which look like a barrel a barrel sort of a large barrel which is inserted inside a membrane okay so people think that you know there might be the formation of tiny barrels you know which are forming in the bacterial membrane through these polypeptides okay is, all right uh, is there yeah. a specific name for these structures sir mm, i i uh, i am not aware of this i don't think so because you know the specific name exists for these polypeptides but uh, there is no specific name for the structure it is formed because you know you have not characterized the structure so it's difficult to associate a name with a polypeptide all right yes sir thank you sir yeah so uh, the other is, thing yes uh, so can the r group be another um, uh, what do we say fatty acid uh the r group does not it's not directly a fatty acid because see <laughs> because of the stability of the linkage so imagine you are forming a fatty acid so phosphate is an acid right yes sir yeah so if you have another direct fatty acid here you would form a linkage that would be an anhydride isn't it yes sir yeah so if you have an anhydride that is present in water that will undergo spontaneous cleavage okay yes sir right yeah and so sir, what and mm -hmm. so if you can have a glycerol over there uh, r group can be a glycerol group correct. so so then can you potentially have a uh, multiple linkages like glycerol yes. can be substituted by uh, fatty acids again yes i will and show you an example that way. i'll show you an example yes, it happens okay thank okay. you okay so so the other thing that uh, we we uh, spoke a little bit about the head group i'll just uh, talk about the lipid tails now it turns out that <clears throat> yeah so here uh, you have uh, uh, i'm on my next slide so you have this this long lipid tails there are saturations and unsaturated sites onto this lipid tails right so uh, for example yeah so this uh, 14 amino acid uh, not amino acid sorry 14 carbon chain uh, fatty acid is called as myristic acid and then you know the the one with the 16 is called the palmitic acid now you know you have one with 18 here which is with one unsaturation between the number 9 and the number 10 is called oleic acid and you have another one the same carbon length but you have two on sites of unsaturation which is 9 10 and 12 13 is called linoleic acid now you know if you so it turns out that all these guys are present in the membrane now depending upon the number of saturated and unsaturated sites that is present in the membrane like we are talking about the anatomy of the anatomy of the lipids the 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 properties of the lipid membrane completely changes right so so it turns out that uh, the the membranes that are present you know either have saturated fatty acid or 
have a combination of saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid, but this unsaturated side is a, is in a cis conformation, or I I should rather say cis configuration, not a conformation. Okay, now uh, here comes the question: Can someone tell me why is it a cis configuration, and what do you think happens if you have a cis configuration as opposed to a trans configuration? So trans would uh, have more uh, compact packing and structure. Why would trans have more compact packing? Because the structure will become more symmetric. Uh huh. So. Okay. So, <coughs> so the cis molecules like. It causes a like, bend in the like the uh, in the carbon chain. So the bend in the carbon chain makes the cell membrane fluid. Yeah. Yeah, good. I mean, yeah, I mean, all all, all these uh, answer. I mean, you, good. You you know it very well. So, saturated fatty acids are shown. You know, they are sort of in a staggered conformation. But you know, you, you probably know from the uh, conformation of cyclobutane. I'm sure you would have studied the conformation of cyclobutane. You would have seen that the staggered conformation is the most energetically stable form, right? And so, obviously, if you have a double bond here. You know, so if you just have the double bond here, then uh, the molecule would be trans, and that trans will, of course, uh, pack very nicely with the with the saturated one, which is in the lowest energetic conformation, which is the trans conformation, as opposed to the cis one. The cis one obviously will will induce a, some sort of a packing defect <laughs> in this uh, because the bent is much higher, right? And that is why it turns out that you know if you have more of unsaturated fatty acids the boiling point of the of the fats and oils or, 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 or let's say that you know when we talk about the saturated fats and the oils yeah and the difference is fundamentally in the number of you know if it's more unsaturated fatty acids present then then the uh, then the oil or, or, or the membranes are more fluidic as opposed to the ones where you have more of saturated fatty acids Likewise, you know, you, you might have studied about trans fats and the trans fats are the ones, you know, which are very high boiling point because, you know, they pack extremely well. And those guys are the ones where you have trans double bonds. OK. And the other thing which I also want to point out, maybe it's there in the next class. OK. Please repeat once sir. I'm not able to understand. Yeah. So Hello? see what I am trying to say that the trans ones, the trans double bond. Are you familiar with the trans double bond? You should be. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. OK. Yes, sir. See, if you look into the structure of, let's say, this palmitic acid, right? The palmitic acid, the way it is drawn, it's in a staggered conformation. Do you know what's a staggered and an eclipsed conformation? Yes, sir. Good. Sir. So, so what I'm trying to tell you is if you go to your chemistry lectures, you know, maybe in class 11 and 12, you would have studied the energy profile, the potential energy of, of a cyclo, uh, not a cyclobutane, the regular N-butane, you know, when you rotate the, uh, you know, for example, the C2, C3 bond, and you would see different kinds of conformations. You know, you would have done in a Newman projection. Have you done this? Yes. yes. Yeah. So in the yes, Newman sir. projection, you would see that the lowest energy one is the one which has this fully staggered conformation, right? Sir. Now, yes, sir. Now, so what happens is, uh, so uh, so that is why the palmitic acid is shown. Well, now I just, for the time being, I want you to imagine that the palmitic acid is present in the membrane in a staggered conformation because this is the lowest energy conformation because everything wants to achieve the lowest energy, right? So if you have another, imagine this is a, you know, palmitic acid prime that has a double bond at 9 and 12 position, 9 and 10 position then that molecule will pack extremely well against the saturated one, okay? So because of the packing, what happens is, you know, the entire packing of the membrane, you know, because, you know, you don't have one more double bond containing palmitic acid, trans double bond containing palmitic acid, you have several of those. So, so, so that means that, you know, there are localized regions in the membrane which are very rigid, right? So that gives to overall rigidity to the membrane. 
So that means the packing becomes better and better because the other reason you have to understand that, you know, you have a, if you have a double bond, the double bond is a pi bond, right? It's not a sigma bond. So the CC rotation, for example, if there is a double bond here, this bond, there is no rotation, right? So, so that bond is, you know, permanently in a staggered conformation. Whereas if you just have a CC sigma bond, that this, you know, depending upon the energy available, it can go into, you know, different sort of eclipse, semi-eclipse, you know, uh, skewed or whatever gauge conformations you have studied. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? So it's... Sir, it's uh, in the palmitic part, hmm. we have the staggered part, which is the most stable. Yeah. And we are considering if the nine part has a double bond and it's a yeah. trans double bond. Right. Then the rigidity will be better. Yes. And the reason why it is better because in the in this part, you know, in the double bond one, that is permanently in a staggered conformation as opposed to the saturated one because the saturated one can flip into a cis conformation also. So there is, you know, so just for the sake of demonstration, it's shown in a staggered conformation, but it's not always that these molecules are always in a staggered conformation. They flip flop between, you know, skewed uh, and eclipsed and, and staggered conformation. Whereas if you have a double bond, it's always in a staggered conformation. So if you, so it, so that, so, so, it, so, so it means that, you know, you're inducing some sort of a uh, local rigidity. And once you have a local rigidity, you know, it's some sort of a crystallization seed. I don't know if you have done crystallization in uh, in class 12. You know, it's like, you know, sometimes what you do is you scratch the, you know, scratch the vessel, you know, the glass vessel or the beaker with a glass rod so that, you know, you have a couple of glass uh, fine particles. And on those beads, you know, your molecule supersaturated solution or whatever, you know, it sort of, you know, collapses and forms the crystal. So it's like that. So if you have a double bond, you know, that double bond acts as a seed. And on those, you know, these uh, single bond containing or the saturated ones very nicely pack and form a very rigid structure. Is it is it clear? So, uh, sir, but, uh, in the unsaturated part, we have cis con that configuration of the unsaturated yes. part. Yeah. But in case of saturated, we have trans. If we have trans double bond, in that case, we'll get a permanent that permanent staggered. In case of unsaturated, yes. we have cis configuration. Yes. So why yes. is that in that in unsaturated part cis? Because because the cis one is you know if 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 there was no saturation at this side, right? This would resemble a eclipsed conformation, which is more energy rich, right? And a saturated one would prefer to be in a staggered conformation than in a than in a conformation which is which is in an eclipsed conformation. So if you are to have equilibrium between a cis and a trans, the equilibrium will always be preferred towards the trans. I mean, trans mean the eclipsed and the staggered. The equilibrium will be preferred towards the staggered. So you'll have more of a staggered conformation than an eclipsed conformation. So that is why if you have some sort of eclipsed mimics, that will disturb more than if you have a staggered uh, staggered uh, mimic. Is that clear now? In the uh, only part, uh, yeah. we have... Hold on, hold on. Your question is holding me, right? You know, we can talk about it later, right? So after the class, if you still have questions, if you do not have the next class, you can stay back. I will talk to you. <clears throat> okay, sir. Okay, so the other thing that we need to uh, that 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 is present is, for example, there are molecules. So uh, you, you not only have the single-tailed uh, lipids, uh, a single-tailed meaning that you know, so so long-tailed lipids. You also have molecules which are cyclic lipids. So this is this is a molecule which is called as cholesterol. Probably you know many of you have heard of cholesterol. So cholesterol are also present in the membrane. Now, you know, you can see that cholesterol has, you know, I mean, most of them are actually saturated. But, uh, and there is one unsaturation side. But, you know, this, this, there is an OH group. So this sort of mimics the head group and this entire thing sort of mimics the tail. Now, what happens is because of the cyclic structure, this part is entirely pretty rigid, right? There is not much of a dynamics. So it's it's more like a um, so you have uh, 
all those uh, all those lipids you know which are uh, which essentially look like uh, look like this and in between you have a molecule of a cholesterol right and it turns out that you know the role of the cholesterol is is sort of packed very nicely with these uh, single tailed lipids and uh, provide rigidity to the membrane so that that's what the cholesterol does cholesterol provides rigidity to the membrane and interestingly cholesterol is not present in the uh, prokaryotic membrane as far as i know there might be some exceptions okay now you also have uh, uh, also have uh, storage forms of lipids which are called as triglycerides right so you can see that you know all the glycerol oh are es es essentially esterified you don't have the phosphate group as and when required you know these molecule can actually get hydrolyzed and get incorporated into the lipids that are present on the membrane now coming to the question that one of your uh, one of your uh, classmates asked that so there was a very good question so possibility that uh, you know one of the one of the phosphate group essentially you know binds to another another lipid it the answer is yes for example you can see that this phosphate groups actually binds to another glycerol which is also linked to another phosphate and another two lipid tails right so this is you know you can imagine it's more like a dimer of a glycerophospholipid right and uh, the dimer is is connected by a glycerol unit so this molecule is called as a cardiolipin which is typically found in the mitochondrial membrane you know it has very interesting functions one of the interesting function although it's not extremely well verified but people believe that cardiolipins have a role in membrane fusion so you can imagine that you know so if you have two membranes you know one membrane here can you see my laser pointer Yes, sir. Yeah. So imagine you, you. So so for example, if you have, you know, this part of the cardiolipin is bound to. Uh, let's say that initially, you know, the entire cardiolipin is 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 on a on a specific membrane, and for some reason, what happens is this part of the cardiolipin, you know, you know, is is let's say imagine it's dynamic. It goes out of the membrane, and this guy can actually interact with another membrane. Then what this guy will do. Is bring both the membranes close to each other, right? And can lead to fusion. I mean, I tried to explain you a very, very simplistic picture. This doesn't happen, but you know, so, so you know, it's only because of the architecture of cardiolipin, because there is a, there, you know, so people believe that these cardiolipins, uh, you know, sort of, you know, dimers of uh, glycerophospholipids or whatever, you know, they have a very interesting role in membrane fusion. Okay. Now, uh, after we so, have, uh, there yeah. is a doubt. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He has been raising and to find something. Sorry, sorry. Uh, is there one student has a doubt. He has three two. You can read. Yes, yes. I, I yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I was just uh, I had gotten disconnected for the last five minutes. Like, ah, okay. so uh, if you could just repeat what you uh, said. Well, I mean, uh, in uh, short, just just uh, I mean, just see the see the see the you know eventually please see the recordings, okay? Because you know what happens is every now and then people get disconnected. Uh, I mean, I'll not be able to complete whatever small portions I'm yes, trying to. Yes. I hope you understand. Okay, sir. And sir, I had like one more question. Please. And, yes. Uh, it is, uh, so uh, we have heard in uh, a lot of different places that uh, uh, transsaturated fatty mm. acids are uh, are uh, like a health concern. So yeah. why is that in general? Yeah. So so essentially, this is the reason, right? You know, so because this guy induces rigidity in the membrane, reducing the fluidity. And if you reduce the fluidity of the membrane. You know there can be uh, well uh, it's uh, so imagine it's well I, it's difficult to explain but I will try to explain I mean I don't know the exact reasons but there can be multiple reasons one reason could be that you know if if your membrane is too rigid right uh, the passage of molecules can be a problem the free diffusion of proteins that are present in the membrane can be a problem right. And the other thing also can be that you know, so if a, if a molecule, if a membrane is too rigid, a slight distortion can probably cause the membrane to break apart. It's also possible. Like for example, I don't know if you know about samurai swords. If you're interested, you can see that. So samurai swords have a one part which is more ductile, and the other part, you know, uh, so 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 one part which is very very rigid, but that part, you know, the 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 
the end which is a sharp end that is that is extremely rigid but you know that that if you hit it hard with some other sword that's at the same time also very brittle right but on the other part you know which is very rigid the back side you know it's it's sort of if you look into the microstructure of that it turns out that it's not a very rigid part so it it can it can uh, it can fend blows right it's it's something like that so so if you make the make the membrane too much rigid you know the fluidity and the flexibility that is present in a membrane that is lost and uh, one must appreciate that biology is extremely dynamic including the membrane you want things to be dynamic you don't want to be extremely rigid like uh, like a rock all right i'll show you in a minute you know how membranes essentially look like <coughs> so yeah uh, uh. so just a question the trans uh, these trans structures they have they are more rigid and have a greater stability so uh, does this amount to you know a reduced rate of digestion in our body that could also be that could also be i do not know but i i doubt that it could be it could be yes that could... say maybe it's a health concern i just thought that uh, it could be but i am talking in structural perspective you probably would okay okay you're okay. talking from a metabolism per perspective which is which is very true i i believe that yes it's very likely it's possible yes okay all right yeah okay sir yeah so the other thing uh, that uh, because you know earlier some someone asked long time back probably in one of the first classes so what is the thickness of this membrane and typically it turns out that uh, so you know if you are considering mammalian membrane i'm sure that it is very similar to the bacterial membrane as well so so you have this uh, a polar region which is composed of all the head groups and uh, imagine this is the outer leaflet here you know you have the outer leaflet which is exposed to the environment and you have the inner leaflet you know which is exposed to the cytosol the thickness the inner inner thickness the hydrophobic core is around 35 angstroms right and uh, yeah so if you consider this head groups also so overall you know it varies but it's roughly around 40 angstrom thickness of the membrane all right and what is very interesting about this membrane is so here uh, we have the structure of a micelle right uh, so now you you probably would recall that uh, um, lipids uh, for example which are which are single tailed right they form micelles now you know some people have tried to do simulations of micelles you know computer simulations of micelles and have tried to understand that you know are, are they very rigid structure are they very dynamic structure you know what exactly are they so here you know it's uh, so in a it's is essentially a snapshot of a uh, of a micelle Uh, all these you know molecules in cyan are essentially water molecules and, and and this is all the water molecules stripped off and you can see you can probably very well appreciate for example if you look at this lipid right you see this lipid tail you know in most parts they are all uh, uh, saturated lipids uh, so here you can see that uh, i mean i don't know it's very easy for you to see but you know since i'm tuned my eyes are tuned i can see until this part you know this lipid uh, has all the carbon atoms which are in a staggered conformation right whereas from this part onwards you can see that there is a cis peptide bond all right i'm uh, sorry not a cis peptide bond but there is a uh, this this cc bond is in a cis configuration likewise here also you see so so this is a, I, i think is it ethanolamine or phosphatidylcholine one of those uh and here uh, you can see that uh, so this is the phosphate of course this is your r group and uh, and you see that this carbon you know here it is staggered staggered but suddenly at this carbon you see a cis conformation now at this site obviously you know we spoke that you know typically in 9 and 12 we have a cis double bond but in here you know probably it's like 1 2 3 4 you know 4 or 5 you have a cis kind of uh, conformation now this is a conformation not a configuration i hope you know what is a conformation and configuration you know conformation is something that can be you know swap or or you know so so you can go to and fro between the conformation just by cc rotations cc c and whatever rotations but configuration is something you know you cannot go back and forth unless you break a bond right so uh, so so the the point to show you this that is that that although we imagine that 
you know, they are very rigid in structure. They're not very rigid. They are extremely flexible. They're very, very dynamic, okay? And at various times, you know, you have, you know, for example, C3, C4 is a CIS1. And at, at a, 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 for example, if you're considering this specific snapshot at whatever time frame, you know, this bond is a CIS1. And after, you know, whatever minutes or whatever seconds or microseconds, you can probably see that this bond is not even a, is not not in a, in a cis confirmation uh, again okay right so 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 these are essentially my cells right now uh, <clears throat> now what happens is how are we doing with the time can anyone tell me it's 12 it's exactly it's exactly oh, oh, wow <laughs> shall i continue or uh, what do we do um, sir, the next math class is pre-recorded, so you can continue. Okay, I'll continue for just 10 minutes and uh, because, yeah, so that we can finish some, some slides, right? And uh, so, so this is a my cell, right? And you might be very well aware of the fact that, you know, so for example, we use uh, many uh, my cells in our life, for example, the shampoo that you use, right? You know, sometimes, you know, so when your hairs get very dirty, and sticky, you know, your, your 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 parents would have insisted you use your shampoo and clean your hair. Now, shampoo is something, you know, that also has detergents. Now, detergents are the ones which fundamentally forms the micelles. Lipids, you know, typically colloquially, lipids are the ones which forms this bilayers. Now, the lipids are typically not considered the ones which actually have double tails, right? So, uh, I, I also might have used it very wrongly, right? Uh, so in my classes, but here, you know, I am showing you the structures of certain detergents because detergents are not only very useful in our daily lifestyle, they're useful and extremely useful in research as well. For example, here, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that was a choline. Here, you can see that, you know, it's a quaternary ammonium center. So the earlier case, you can see that this is also a quaternary ammonium center. So this must be a, uh, uh, this must be a, say, dodecyl phosphocholine, you know, that, that simulation. Now, <clears throat> you can see that, you know, so this is a molecule, dodecyl, meaning that, you know, you have 12 carbon with a, you know, carboxylate group or whatever. Okay. Uh, dodecyl, uh, yeah, so this is alcohol, actually. And you have a phosphate group and you have a choline. Now, this guy, dodecyl phosphocholine, is something that is present in shampoos, right? Now, you have very other interesting detergents, for example, sodium dodecyl sulfate. Now, this guy, okay, so before that, I just want to tell you that, you know, many of these detergents, uh, you know, the, the polar part, the polar head groups either have a very strong ionic part, as, for example, you can see that, you know, DPC or SDS, it has a complete negative charge. There are some other detergents, for example, this dodecyl maltoside or Triton X, you know, you have a polar part, but you do not have a charge, right? And you can imagine that if you have a charge, this charge will lead to very strong solvation, or I mean, I can also say that interaction with water molecules. However, if you do not have charge, the interaction with the water molecules were relatively less. Okay, so, so uh, how many of you have heard of SDS, sodium dodecyl sulfate? Sir, SGS page, it's something used in biotechnology. <laughs> uh, something that you will also use in your practice. It's used to dissolve the membrane. Yeah. Uh, which one is used to dissolve the membrane? Sodium dodecyl sulfate is used to uh, destroy the membranes. Yeah, you can you can use uh, sodium dodecyl sulfate to destroy the membrane. Certainly, so so you probably would have seen the ad of this green or green mm -hmm. bar or whatever, right? Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, uh, the detergents are lipids. Uh, detergents are uh, single-tailed uh, molecules with a head group and a and a tail. Okay. As I said, that lipid typically people associate lipids with a polar head group and a tail, which are two tails. So I remember reading sodium dodecyl sulfate as an anionic detergent. Yes, it is. It is. It is an anionic detergent. Same is DPC. It is an anionic detergent. But I am asking that you know some of you are familiar with uh, sodium dodecyl sulfate. But as uh, one of you said that uh, sodium dodecyl sulfate is something that is used in feeds. 
Now, PAGE is something which is a polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, right? Now, yes, you know, yes, electrophoresis. Yeah, it's an electrophoretic technique where you can uh, uh, separate uh, molecules, and typically PAGE is used for separating, um, I mean, <laughs> polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis is used for separating proteins. Now, you know what so SDS does is, uh, I mean, not it's I mean, it can be used for, you know, you know, destroying membranes, but typically it is used for denaturing proteins as you would. I mean, when we go to proteins, you will see that, you know, proteins, soluble proteins, globular proteins, they have hydrophobic surfaces. Now, what it it turns out that, you know, this sodium road desyl sulfate, since it is a very strong interaction with the water molecule and also has a, you know, lipophilic part, this guy you know, this part essentially interacts very strongly with the hydrophobic part, okay? And this part is being interacting with, the, or, or since it interacts very strongly with water, what it does, it actually, you know, um, it it exposes, or, or let's say that it sort of, you know, exposes that hydrophobic part, which is not supposed to be exposed to water, it exposes to water and denatures the protein. Okay, so this is what it does because you know you don't have add one SDS molecule, you had thousands and thousands and millions of you know you know Avogadro's number, you know so <clears throat> so 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 those molecules bind to the hydrophobic protein and and sort of expose them to water, right? And I mean meaning that you know not one of these molecules but those micelles expose them to water, and since it exposes that to water, the protein essentially gets denatured. Now you also have non-ionic detergents with uh, which are this uh, so dodecyl maltoside and triton x these are much milder detergents what these detergents do is okay i am sorry for the background noise okay yeah so yes okay fine uh, we can we can stop here yeah so or maybe just just let me finish this slide so, uh, so this dodecyl maltoside and triton X, these are milder detergents, you know, what these are used for. So these are not used for denaturing protein, but instead they are used for solubilizing proteins that are embedded in the membrane. You know, as you, as you progress in your biology lessons, you will see that there are proteins that are present in membrane. Typically, you know, like, you know, what we briefly mentioned, like in the last class, G protein coupled receptors, those receptors are present in the membrane. And if you are to study the structure of these proteins, you have to actually strip off the lipids or, or let's say that you have to take out those membrane proteins from the membrane environment into solution in, in decent concentration so that you can study their structures, right? And these detergents like dodecyl, maltoside, triton X, I'm sure Smoothie can actually tell you more about these non-ionic detergents, what they use in their laboratory because they study membrane proteins. They use these detergents to solubilize those proteins and take them out from the membrane. Solubilizing meaning that in this context, taking out from the membrane environment and taking them in liposomes or whatever, in high concentration so that they can study their structures okay yeah so uh, there are yes i mean I, I think we can stop here and there are a few more uh, slides and then we will start the carbohydrates on monday uh, if you have any more questions now you can ask sir how do we solubilize extrinsic proteins how do we solubilize? Uh, uh, did not understand the question <laughs> you can actually, hold, hold on let me Smoothie, you can actually turn off the recording, so we are done. But you know, we can have the question answer thing. <clears throat> yeah. Tell me. Yes, there was a question. So to extract a uh, 